Cup. Yeah, I'm holding. I hear you. Wait, can you hold that thought? I need a full report. What's the situation on the field team? Labs, but how many do we have access to? And, and, and what's the situation on the first one? All dead? All of them? Sophie, this. This changes everything. This completely changes the game. Yes. Yes. From your friend at the DOD? This isn't under their jurisdiction. We have to deal with this ourselves. Okay, I'll call. What up, Jippers? L plays back for another Waking Titan update video to catch you up on everything that's been going on in the last couple of days, and oh boy. <laughs> Once again, things have been freaking insane, and I'm recording this in the daytime on Sunday the 10th of June, where things continue to go freaking crazy, with Waking Titan updates, PDF documents, all kinds of stuff happening today, and of course, we're very much expecting to see some good No Man's Sky news tonight on the E3 Microsoft conference, so make sure you're staying tuned for that one. I will be live streaming that event, so hopefully you're seeing this video beforehand, and you'll know to come over there and watch it with me it's also my birthday so <laughs> it should be a pretty good time and I'm hoping we're about to get the best birthday present for me ever in the form of some sort of news about No Man's Sky next and hopefully even a trailer that would be freaking insane but anyway enough with the chit chat let's get on with the madness that is Waking Titan. So on the 1st of June, the Uplink Satcom 70 app or website updated and it asked us for an access code to calibrate. Nobody could figure out the access code and this ended up being one heck of a mission to try and solve because we were trying for a good couple of days. Discord were trying, Game Detectives were trying, everyone on eTark was trying, pretty much everyone that was looking into Waking Titan was trying to figure this out and it took some serious time so this was definitely quite a tricky little puzzle for us to solve. But basically what happened was the ominous sound that was playing on the app on the uh, website itself was a sound file that actually changed every 16 minutes past the hour the audio that was playing from that actually changed and it turned out that each of those little audio clips had a different set of booms and blips and of course that was deciphered to give us the answer which turned out to be the Fibonacci sequence so that was the clue that this app was trying to give us through these weird noises that kept changing and updating and we had people going crazy like layering all of the different audio files over the top of each other trying to figure out what the differences were all kinds of stuff happened but yeah we eventually got led to the Fibonacci sequence and then on June the 2nd we got a new old gods email which most of you will know at this point signed by major Sophie Dubois and that basically gave us an update on the investigation into the where incident and also linked us to a new form which was a psychological profile test and it announced that 16 people were going to be rewarded with limited edition atlas passes gosh i hope i get one of these because they sound so freaking cool uh, but yeah we know that there's going to be some more atlas passes going out so if you haven't gone and filled in this psychological test on your email from the old gods make sure you go and do that we could all be in for a chance to win a very very special atlas pass and of course that would be freaking incredible. And also contained in that email, which was really freaking cool, we got a link to Reddit, to a Reddit thread, which actually was Emily posting there, and it contained an image showing a number of where research labs all across the world. 
and we got the following message. With the help of the Citizen Scientist Division, we now have a direct contact with Emily. Her situation is stable but still critical. Unfortunately, it seems that one of Weartech's research labs is continuing to upload corrupted data to the satellite. This bad data may be causing further damage to the network and to Emily. We need to analyse her recent interactions to figure out if she was able to make predictions that could help to identify and isolate the source of the broadcast. Please find below a list of where research labs and their approximate locations. I will need to fill a full report on how the issue was diagnosed and the name of the responsible location before we can proceed. Loop 16 appears to be currently active on Reddit so you can upload this report into her existing thread. I know this is a large task, but I am confident in your abilities. So that was the message, that was the task that we were given. And it was also found that Emily's posts on Reddit also contained hidden Unicode characters, and when they were decoded to ASCII, we found a set of dates and times. So I'm going to show that for you now. And then another comment from Emily after that revealed the following message. And then a little while after that, the message was edited and we got a new message which said 10.06 error. Now, of course, 10.06, 10th of June error. Emily can't see what happens on that date. The popular theory, and I'm pretty confident in it at this point, is that that was pointing to June the 10th because there's going to be some No Man's Sky Next related stuff happening at E3 this year on the Microsoft presentation on the main stage. So you can see why we're all pretty excited today, waiting for this to happen, hopefully going to get something really freaking cool. So once we got these messages, the satellite's path was tracked using the timestamps within them, and that actually placed the satellite somewhere near Sacramento. And of course, that's what led us to knowing that the Sacramento Ware Research Lab was the one that was sending the corrupt data to the satellite and causing all of this madness. But there is actually another little theory that I want to talk about here to further cement the idea that No Man's Sky Next is going to be at E3 tonight. And when I'm streaming it, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be a very freaking exciting time. And that is a theory by Peaceful Gamer. Anyone who's following this channel or Waking Titan will probably know that Peaceful Gamer is very active on Twitter, sharing all kinds of stuff about Waking Titan as soon as it happens. But he actually took this and came up with a really freaking cool theory, which I think is just too good not to be 100% right. So I do want to quickly mention that in here it's not an official part of the ARG I guess at this point but it definitely looks like he has solved something that everyone else has missed and what his theory did was essentially take a Fibonacci spiral obviously the Fibonacci sequence was the clue that led to us figuring a lot of this stuff out he took the actual visual spiral and placed that onto a map with Sacramento as the starting point and Phoenix as the end point. So Phoenix, Arizona to Sacramento, placing the Fibonacci spiral on top of that to try and line them up. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. Also on the curve of that spiral, if you do it that way, is the LA Convention Center, which of course is where E3 is being held. And that's where Microsoft are going to be today, hopefully, <laughs> to show us some No Man's Sky stuff. And this is what that looks like. And in my opinion, that is just too freaking perfect not to be right. And his theory was that Sacramento is the current status of No Man's Sky next. Uh, LA Convention Center is going to be the trailer or something like that at E3. And then Phoenix is the end point or the release date or the final version of next. So he's basically taken the Fibonacci sequence and used that as a visual clue, which is something that has been hinted at in the questionnaires. One of the questions was, would we like more visual clues going forward? And it certainly seems like they've done that with this so yeah props to PG for figuring that out anyone who's a little bit confused about where he picked Phoenix from Phoenix of course was a major theme a major clue that was dropped previously in Waking Titan around the times we got the Atlas passes and then kind of thought to be just a loose end after that but if this is right then this would be exactly where that Phoenix clue comes back in and is used again in the ARG so yeah I am sold on this I definitely think PG has figured something out really cool here so yeah well done PG but anyway, back to Waking Titan itself, we also had another Waking Titan terminal update, a new status command, and that said, guidance, subroutine, offline, uplink, awaiting calibration. And then June the 7th is when we actually managed to get the code to get into that application and get it unlocked. And the actual code was 1282189. So if you've missed all of this and you just want to go and unlock your app and get it working, just go ahead, open that up and type in the access code 1282189. And once you did that, we got a new screen that just said satellite online connection successful waiting for system initialization. And then the next day, Emily posted another new thread on Reddit titled Loop 16 Sequence 29. And that gave us another voice recording which said, Emily, 
Protocol 16 now active. If I hate someone because I am afraid of him, and if I am aware of my hate, but not of my fear, we might say that my hate is conscious and my fear is unconscious. And that also contained Morse code that translated to the following. I awoke from a nightmare, screams of anger engulfed in flame, and then 10,000 branching futures. I saw Sacramento, 12 dreaming without sleep, buried in a constellation. And this is where things started to get really freaking crazy. <laughs> because on June the 8th, we discovered the SATCOM 70 node network and a new dashboard for the website. And along with that, the Uplink calibration app also updated and that now gave us the ability to put in our own console commands to try and unlock things and get access to different areas of this node network. And all of those areas in the node network, once we got to them, once we were successfully able to put in a code to point to them, were giving us little files and clues and bits of information and we did have a little bit of help figuring all this out because the satcom 70 user over on reddit did post a manual essentially giving us a guide of the network and what commands to use to get into the console and there are a couple of interesting commands that came out of this that have given us weird responses. So if you typed in node bracket 1.618 bracket, that actually gave us a string of binary code which translated into Harry. And then when people went over to Waking Titan, typed in who is Harry, we found a new PDF memo from Ethan Rose to Major Sophie Dubois, saying that one of the subordinates, James Harry, had been blocking access into the Myriad infrastructure and people were constantly emailing him to try and get back into the system System and sometimes he was just sending back really weird responses that seemed to be puzzles or little challenges or riddles rather than just giving them an answer. So something very strange was going on there. And at the bottom of the memo was a little string of text which turned out to be part of the YouTube URL address and that led us to the YouTube video of the song Where Is My Mind by The Pixies. Great song by the way. <laughs> but then a little while after that the community obviously managed to figure out all of the possible nodes that they could get to through this network and then the full SATCOM 70 dashboard was properly unlocked. And if you go there now, that's exactly what you'll see. This freaking awesome new dashboard that we've got with the rotating satellite there. All of these dreamer profiles down the sound, the map, everything going on. It just looks really freaking cool. <laughs> and there's a whole load of stuff for us to figure out on this dashboard. The first one there in the top left, view element one, that was actually unlocked. And that's how we received the ringed planet little hologram thing that we all got. And I made a video about and we were all super excited about. So yeah, we're getting teased features through this dashboard. It looks like we still got a load more to go yet before the next release date so i'm hoping we're going to see a load more cool stuff and if you want to hear me talk about exactly what i think is coming because i think i know what's going to be coming in every single one of those and i have made a little prediction uh, that is in my ringed planet video so go back and watch that one if you did miss it and let me know what you think but yeah moving on and there are also some console commands that we can use on the dashboard. Uh, one of them was search Myriad, and that gave us the following output, which looks like complete gibberish to me, but apparently the words Erna Dictum Consecutor were highlighted, and that led to a download button, which took us to the Myriad Company logo. But that was not it. Believe it or not, there's more of this madness happening. Even right now, there's still more stuff going on. So there is quite a lot to catch up on. But on June the 9th at 10.10 UTC time, the WearDev Twitter account actually posted a new tweet that linked to a password encrypted file. And it turned out the hash from the tweet itself and from the zip file that we got from the tweet once they had been converted into decimal and the difference between them was then converted into ASCII, I know, absolutely crazy, uh, that led us to another pastebin link. And from there, people were actually able to figure out the password for the zip file, and that gave us this new PDF, which was just called report.pdf, and that said the following. Uh, approximately 11.15pm local time on June the 8th, 2018, the Beijing facility suffered a catastrophic mass disconnect event. Of the 14 dreamers housed in the facility awaiting extraction, 10 died immediately upon hard disconnect. The remaining four died over the course of the next two hours. The Beijing facility will be closing for the next four to 10 business days for a full audit, recovery and remediation. That's pretty freaking cold to me, guys. <laughs> All of these people dead and they're just going to shut down for a few days and clean up and carry on. <laughs> But then after that, on June the 10th at 1.09am UTC time, Emily made another new post on the Reddit titled Loop16 Sequence 49, which contained a link to a YouTube video by the same name, and I'll play that message for you now. 
working. My communication subroutine is working. I think. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So much interference. Dear Citizen Science Division, I hope you will receive this message. Much of my subroutine was damaged following the wear incident. Atlas put my existence at risk when they tried to deal with the corruption within the Myriad network. The origin of the corruption isn't clear, but it put at risk a major experiment from a company named Ware. Please listen to me carefully. Ware technology is groundbreaking and must be protected at all costs. It is a major step in simulated environment and will have tremendous implications on our future. Don't get me wrong. I don't condemn Atlas's action to contain the situation, but you must help me resolve this peacefully. A lot is at stake. My pre-con subroutine gave me a false positive and the future I see right now, let's say we have to be extremely, extremely careful on what we do next. Part of my AI resides in the memory mainframe of the Myriad Cloud. This is where most of the live data from where was running when things started to degrade. As we speak right now, there's a number of individuals on Earth that are currently stuck to a where dev kit and unable to disconnect safely. I seem to be able to interface with some of these dreamers, for lack of a better word, and manage to safely disconnect them. But the memory mainframe is badly degraded. I'm connected with Myriad SATCOM 70, a system that you helped put online. When SATCOM 70 and the Uplink app are fully functional, we will able to begin our work to extract the last streamers that are still stuck. I'm unable to predict the outcome of this mission. It's odd for me to say, we'll see together. So there's a lot of people now thinking that actually Emily is saying we need to protect Ware, we need to look after Ware, Ware are not bad guys at all, they're actually good guys, and that could be the case, but I'm not 100% sure yet. It all seems a little bit strange, and to me it sounds like she's talking more about the technology that they're creating than the people behind it themselves. So, yeah, I don't know guys, like, are Ware actually the bad guys? Or was L Plays Gaming wrong all along? <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out pretty freaking soon, because things are still ramping up like crazy at the moment. And we've now actually started getting quite frequent status updates on WakingTitan.com. So the first one of those said a Myriad field team has been dispatched to non-compliant Sacramento facility. And then we got a couple more updates and they said field team breached the facility, stand by for additional info. 12 comatose individuals located in the facility, field team are moving into secure. And then the latest one at the time of me making this video said 12 apparent test subjects secured, safely transported out of facility field team will clear the rest of the site and await further instruction and that of course was then followed by this absolutely shocking video clip that i played at the start there which appears to show elizabeth layton being blown to smithereens it's not 100 percent clear because her feed cut out as the explosions were going off but we could be looking at the death of elizabeth layton guys so after all of that absolute madness, I don't even know if there's anyone left alive over there to possibly even make it to the LA Convention Center for an E3 presentation tonight. But I am hoping that we're going to see some No Man's Sky next news tonight in the Microsoft presentation. I am really excited for that. I'm going to be streaming it. It's my birthday as well, so I'm just going to have some fun on there either way. Hopefully you guys are staying tuned and you're going to come along with me for that. It should be good fun and I'm really, really hoping. I do, I do think we're going to get some No Man's Sky next stuff there so yeah make sure you're around for that guys that's gonna do it for this video hopefully you did enjoy it please do drop a like and a comment if you did and i will of course catch you in another video very soon take care guys and peace i just want to give a huge thank you and shout out to my current patreon supporters shiroka majelli yo madeline j uk gamer 84 todd cook neil b anarchy vanilla rasmus k autumn long lukash husband vader amras dale from the atlas herb joannes anderson heath and the portrait dude you guys are the best Thank <music> you.